For almost 90 years, the site at the northern edge of Jackson Square in New York City sat undeveloped. Because the land is situated above a subway tunnel, the costs of building were exorbitant, even by New York standards. However, in the height of the real estate boom, money poured into the once derelict Jackson Square site, and architects Cohn, Peterson, Fox were given the task of creating a high-end residential building amongst the historic masonry structures of Greenwich Village. Unlike the surrounding buildings, which are mostly protruded rectangular volumes, one Jackson Square had to be cut into two distinct heights due to unusual city zoning laws that restrict the corner of the site to 11 stories and the rest to seven. We took the strategy that the zoning volume would be considered almost as if it were, let's say, a, a rock in a stream. As water rushes over uh, rocks in a stream and forms a new shape, we would do the same thing by essentially pouring a glass facade over this zoning volume. We um, took the idea of the fluidity and brought it inside, and we thought about um, the, the, the site uh, dimensions um, dictated that we have the um, elevators in the back of the site, which uh, meant that we, were, we would have roughly a, a sort of a canyon-like space, a corridor, to create a lobby. Each panel is made out of stacked bamboo plywood, and, and some of the panels are, are sculpted in, with a CNC milling machine. Many of the surrounding buildings are your typical brick facades, but given New Yorkers' penchant for natural lighting and expansive views, Cohn, Peterson, Fox decided to install an undulating curtain wall. The architects created this curving effect by using 18, 36, and 48 inch wide floor to ceiling operable and fixed windows that are completely flat. The result of this uh, sort of technological experimentation with the wall was to create a, a surface that had a great deal of fluidity to it. But not in just the overall wall, but each floor is differentiated from the floor above it and the floor below it, so that it creates this sense of weaving on the exterior surface. But the real challenge for us was to be able to create a glass facade that could create a connection to this Greenwich Village historic district. We did not want to create a facade which looked as if it were designed for an office building. It was absolutely essential that it be designed for a residential building, carry the scale aspects that related to this more delicate fabric of Greenwich Village, and at the same time, tried to find a way of establishing a dialogue with that fabric. And the manner in which we uh, dealt with this was to create a glass facade, which in fact created sort of a kaleidoscopic replay of the surrounding context through the manner in which it was designed. And that really is the essence of what we've been trying to achieve. 